Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., where we're here with Robert Bass, who is uh, the chairman of uh, Arion, uh, also the president of uh, Keystone uh, Group. Sir, uh, it's an honor to talk to you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, this was truly a historic uh, uh, press conference. You have been passionate. Um, and to remind people what happened is Arion is teaming now with General Electric, but also importantly Lockheed Martin, uh, to develop the world's first supersonic business jet. Uh, you guys have a very ambitious schedule, 2023 in terms of first flight, 2025 uh, in terms of certification, because this is going to be an entirely new type certification. Um, but this has been a passion of yours. You also hold sort of an engineering position uh, with, <laughs> with the company. Uh, you know, you started in 2003. What's the driving passion behind this that's uh, focused on putting a lot of your money involved into, into this extraordinary project? Well, it started really just the, with the intellectual curiosity of you know, the, the idea of what Richard had came up with, which was to kind of reverse the normal approach to supersonic, where it has historically been to minimize wave drag at the expense of surface drag. And Richard looked at it the other way around and figured out that it would work. And, and you're talking about uh, Richard Tracy, Richard the Tracy. Uh, Caltech uh, aerodynamicist who came up with the natural laminar flow concept, which is a very, very different approach to supersonic travel. That's exactly right. Uh, and, and so what? why is this the right time for your standpoint uh, in order to be able to do this? Because guy, this is kind of a holy grail Concord was very successful for a long time, but its cost structure was such that once, especially Air France and KLM merged, that half of the team dropped out and so the whole thing dissolved. What do you see as, why, why is, is now the time to do this? I guess our, our general view has been for a long time that the then now was the time. <laughs> well, I agree, having flown on Concord, it was a life-changing experience, three and a half hours to cross the Atlantic, but why now? Why not? Well, I think that it, it's really, that's a question really to ask Lockheed. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it is, it is their engagement that is really pushing this forward. We are aerodynamicists at Arion. We have done what we can. The, um, the, the work that Airbus did was extremely valuable in terms of the internal systems uh, getting to work, figuring out to, how to fold up the landing gear and not uh, impact drag after, uh, with, a, right. with a stowed landing gear. So there, there have been a lot of things to go into it. And, it's, uh, and you know, it has been interesting. And it, since it's new, there have been a lot of questions that have come up that we have had to figure out how to solve. Um, and uh, it was also very interesting listening to Brad Modier of uh, General Electric talking about how they're going to use uh, an existing core, uh, but then put a low, new low pressure um, section on that in order to be able to deliver the power plant aircraft, uh, obviously powered by three engines. But you're also a, a captain of industry. You're a businessman, and your drive is also to make money off of this project, not just change history in the world and have a really cool airplane <laughs> you could fly around in. Um, talk to us a little bit about what the business case is, uh, because you know there. There is a lot of your investment capital that's in this, and you're trying to convince these guys to come in and put some money into it, and these programs aren't inexpensive. No, well, interestingly, there have been case studies going back into the 90s on the market for supersonic aircraft and, and business jet. And again, business the reason it's a business jet is because of the, uh, you know, that they will, will pay a premium for, for the speed. The, the uh, technology is scalable, and it can be, uh, um, a commercial jet, but Boeing tried that, and the airlines were focused so much on seat mile it didn't happen. But uh, it is a, you know something that has several uh, studies that we had nothing to do with that all came up with uh, you know generally the market over 20 years of 400 aircraft. So it's, the market is there, it's just a question of getting to the point that uh, it is within the capability of the technology, which has been a challenge, and within the, um, the economics that you can sell it for a, a price that is a market price that will make money. 
Uh, and uh, last question, I mean, you travel, uh, you know, in a universe where folks are using uh, private aircraft, but there was a lot of pressure to get out of that, right? Net, NetJets is who you're partnering with on this for 20... FlexJet. FlexJet, excuse me, I apologize for that. My, my apologies. For the first 20 of the aircraft there, uh, that's your first order that right. you announced today. But there has also been an enormous amount of pressure for companies to kind of get out of this. It's seen as being too expensive. You know, we, even when reporters get flown out, there's a little bit of apologeticness sometimes on the part of companies when they do this. Even though if you look at it from uh, a lot of metrics, it is something that makes sense, especially if you're moving large numbers of people to certain places in the country, especially from a time perspective. Do you think that that business case is something that even though this will be more expensive than a regular business jet, that companies are going to step up, are going to buy and invest in this? I, I clearly do, and you know, although historically the American market has been the dominant market for avi aviation of all kinds, the interest in Asia is phenomenal. And if you look at recent um, purchases by of, of large business jets, Asia is, is really uh, coming on. And when you start looking at the city pair distances in Asia, they are vast. And they are, this airplane is something that can shrink the time and really shrink Asia. And I think that there's going to be a large market there. And uh, what's the number on that market? How many aircraft do you see, both in commercial, but perhaps even government, as we heard? Um, there could be quite an attractive government market here as well. Well, as Brian said, 300 aircraft in, t in the first 10 years. Uh, and I do think that there will be a large market in, in government. I can certainly see the, that you know, the, the, the principles will fly in an Ariane and the entourage will follow along in an Airbus or a Boeing. <laughs> Sir, thanks very much. Uh, hope you have a, a great holiday and a very happy new year and look forward to talking to you as the project progresses. Well, thank you. Look forward to talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.